Hello YouTube friends, it's Dr. Teresa Yulrich here again. Well, we're at the point that we're ready to start adding water to the Seahorse Aquarium that we've been slowly building up and putting together over these last several weeks. So what I need to do first is take off the lid to the hang on the back filter. And if you looked at any of the previous videos, we saw that this particular brand has a sponge included in the front. It will help um, pull out some of the floating material in the water, but mostly it's going to work as some biological filtration. It's a little difficult to see, but there is space in the back here. And that's where the filter pad and um, carbon go. And this particular model uses a sort of frame. I don't know if you can see it, but inside of here, there's like a plastic, another blue plastic that looks similar to what's on the top here. And inside of it is some carbon. And here it's like a pouch almost of a filter pad. And one of the things that I want to do before I put that in the filter is rinse it out a little bit because brand new carbon a lot of times will have dust on it. And I would rather the dust be taken out before I put this in the aquarium. I don't know if you can hear, it's a little bit quiet, but you can almost hear the fizzing of, of the carbon as it's getting activated um, from being wet. Okay, so I'll let it drain a few moments. And then I'm going to put it in the slot where this particular uh, filtration is designed to go. So there's a slot back here in, in the filter. And I just slide it right in there. And it stays pretty steady and it holds the sponge in place. And there's still some space in the back. And if you followed one of the previous videos, I talked about how I wanted to add as much biological filtration as possible, especially since this aquarium is prorated on the lower side for the larger seahorses I'm going to be getting. So just as a reminder, if you didn't watch the previous video, I'm going to add some of these bio cubes. And I took some hot water put it in a container and I added some cubes to them and you can see the water looks really murky and that's because there was a lot of dust on these so I wanted to rinse those off and make sure that um, all that dust was off before I put that into the aquarium or in the filter otherwise that will just circulate through the aquarium and I didn't want that. That water is still a little bit hot so I'll come back to that but let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab an amount of those cubes that will fit in the back compartment that's still left in the opening and I've taken an old nylon stocking and I've cut it and I am going to put those cubes inside of here, just enough to fit in the back of the aquarium. And then I'll tie off the top. What will be nice about that is the cubes won't be free floating back there. So when I want to rinse them off, it won't be so tedious trying to pull out each individual cube. I can just pull out the entire bag or sachet of them and rinse those off in water as well, similar to what I did with the filter pad and the carbon. Now here, I have a gallon of water sitting. This gallon of water came from my 300 gallon aquarium. And the reason I took a gallon from that aquarium is that water is seeded or cycled. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about what cycling is, for a saltwater aquarium, but the most basic non-scientific version of it, is, of it is that it's basically a progression through what's called a nitrogen cycle. 
So when any waste is put into fresh, clean salt water, it will first build up what we call ammonia. Over time, that ammonia will transition and become uh, also toxic as the ammonia, something called nitrites, and that's with an I, nitrites. Eventually, over time, those nitrites will continue to convert into a safer nitrates with an A, nitrates. Now, nitrates in a seahorse aquarium at any level still are not good. Um, They can put stress on the seahorses if the levels get too high, but they are not as lethal as elevated ammonia or nitrite levels. Adding a gallon from my seahorse, excuse me, my 300 gallon aquarium just helps the process a little bit because this water has been running for probably 20 years in that 300 gallon aquarium. And yes, I've done water changes and things of that nature. The point of it is that the water is very stable and is going to contain a lot of the bacteria that will help speed up the process. So let me move the lid out of the way for the filter and I'm going to remove the lid for the aquarium and I'm just going to pour this water right into the tank. Now this tank, this water is already at appropriate measured level of salt to be desirable for marine fish including seahorses. So I'm just pouring water in now. And there's the first gallon. Also, I have prepared a bucket of fresh salt water. This bucket is about five gallons. And I've measured the amount of salt in there using what's called a hydrometer. If you're not familiar with a hydrometer, basically it's a device that floats and there are going to be numbers on them. This particular hydrometer, it's very large because it was actually purchased to use with the 300 gallon aquarium, but it's a little hard to see, but there is a bluish range in here. So you want to keep the level within this range you can see that it goes anywhere from 10.22 to 10.28, and you want to go someplace in the middle. Now, I just made an estimate of how much salt I would need adding to added to this um, five-gallon bucket, and you can see that this hydrometer is floating a little bit high. So that means I have too much salt in here for this to be the appropriate level that I want to be successful in setting up an environment for marine animals. I'm not worried about that just because it is only the first bucket. I'm going to need a few more buckets before this tank gets filled up, the seahorse aquarium. So I'll go ahead and use the salt in this aquarium, or excuse me, in this bucket to put into the aquarium. And then as I add more, I'll just start measuring inside of the aquarium itself until I have the correct level of salt. And it will help, too, once I have the filter running and the skimmer running and the water circulation. Everything will mix really well, so I'll have a good idea uh, if I have the correct level of salt. Now, I mixed this up just a few minutes ago. Normally, you don't want to use water. I, I used it right out of the tap. Some people don't agree with that. They like to use um Uh, water that they get that's been purified in some way. I just never have done that. I never felt the need to do that. I've been successful with aquarium fish for many years. I've written aquarium 
articles for magazines when magazines, the hard copy magazines were popular. Um, I just have never really felt the need for it. But then again, I've never kept super delicate marine creatures such as anemones or um, corals, things like that. And maybe for those kinds of creatures, it is necessary. But even for the seahorses, I've never used specialized water. I just use tap water because I live in a, a suburb where I have water that comes through plumbing in my home and it's safe for drinking. It, it's not overly heavy in metals or um, other content that could be harmful to fish. Ideally, and this is what I will do after the tank is set up, you will want to keep an extra five gallon bucket or depending on the size of your aquarium, if you have something bigger, you'll want to keep pre-mixed salt ready to go. And the reason you do that is because tap water, such as the kind of plumbing system that I have from the suburbs I live in, does contain chlorine and that can be harmful to fish. So if you just let the water sit a couple of days, that chlorine dissipates on its own. But also the salt gets a chance to mix with the water. And so you should always keep an extra bucket or barrel, uh, whatever means you use to prepare water um, ahead of time. Because when you do your water changes, you don't want to be mixing fresh water on the spot and replace that newly prepared water with water that you've changed out. You want to have some that has already been seasoned. It's just going to be safer for your fish. Um, you might notice, or maybe you won't, I'll show you. I use a little trick because I move around these five gallon buckets. They can be hefty to haul around, picking them up from some sort of sink or hose and then moving it to your destination. I don't have a sink or a hose near where I have the aquarium here. So I just use one of the rolling platforms that I have for one of my plants and I'll borrow it and just put this five gallon bucket on it when it's heavy with water like this. And it's really nice because I can move the water. I don't worry about it spilling. Um, I'm not hurting myself lugging something that is very awkward to carry because the distribution of it and the weight, um, it makes the bucket buckle a little bit when you use the wire handle on there. So that's been a very helpful thing for me. So my next steps now, I am going to put the water in the aquarium. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. I am also going to finish rinsing out my bio cubes here and grab sufficient amounts to put into the, um, the filter itself. And when I add more water, once I have the bio cubes in here, it will be good for me to add water to this hang on the back filter so that it can create the suction that it needs to start pulling up from the bottom of the tank and run the flow through the filter. And then I'll do the same thing for the protein skimmer. I'll take off this lid here. I'll fill it up with water and you can see I have the extension tube for the filter at the bottom and then I have the power head towards the top pulling in water into the protein skimmer. So next time we'll take a look at how everything is running and we'll talk a little bit about testing your water so that we can determine when it's ready to start adding our seahorses. We're definitely getting closer. Thanks so much for staying with me through this. As I said, I'm having a wonderful time going step by step, putting together a seahorse aquarium using mostly recycled equipment. See you next time.